God is awesome. God, isn't he? Yes, sir. Let's give him some glory, some praise, and some honor. Amen. Isn't it good to be here another day that God has blessed us with? Hmm? Yes. So let's give him praise and honor by loving each other. Let's show each other some love. It's good to be in this pulpit again and preaching God's word. The preacher asked me to be here and I was honored to do so. So we're going to step out the way and let God step in. So if you go with me in prayer. Almighty and most magnificent, glorious, kind, loving, powerful, and understanding Father, which art in heaven. We come before you giving you the praise and the honor and the glory, Father. And we ask you, Father, to let your word go forth, Father, and let it fall on people's hearts, Father, and prick their hearts, Father. And let not Satan take your word away from them, Father, but let it grow and let it be nurtured in them, Father, so that they may know your love your yeah. grace, and your mercy. Mm -hmm. Father, teach us to love each other and to be there for each other. Yeah. Yes. Father, I step out the way right now, Father, and I ask you to send your Holy Spirit and let your Holy Spirit speak through me, Father. Yeah. For it is not about me, but it is yeah. about you. It is about you. In Jesus Christ's name do we pray. Amen. 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 All right, brothers and sisters. Amen. My yeah. sermon today is commitment. <laughs> I hear somebody say, uh oh, commitment. Um, are we committed? Okay. You know, we go through a lot of stuff in life and we let everybody pull us aside and mess us up. Listen, we need to commit to God 100%. And don't let nobody pull you aside. Don't let nobody make you start backbiting. Don't let nobody start making you turn away from God. Don't let nobody. You, you, I'm not going to give today because so-and-so said. I'm not going to take communion today because so-and-so said. I'm not going to sing today because so-and-so said. Listen here. This is your relationship with you and God. You're not hurting so-and-so. You're hurting you and God. Because God loves you and he wants the best for you. So commit to God. And let, all, let him handle all the rest of that stuff. Give it to him. So let's define commitment. Okay, let's, let's, let's define, oh, I can't get it to work. Let's see here. Well, I'm going to use my paper. Commitment, the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause. Are you dedicated to a cause? To have an obligation, a duty, an allegiance, a loyalty, a faithfulness to make a vow. A promise, an oath, a contract, a pact, a deal, a pledge. Am I getting it? Do you hear me? Yeah. To give devotion to. Mm -hmm. We have a commitment to make. We have a commitment to make. So I ask, are you committed? Or will you commit to Jesus? Yeshua Hamashiach today. Because, see, we say, well, I've been in the church 50 years. But have you committed? Don't nobody take person. I look out in the audience. People think I'm looking at them. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at you. But listen here. All right, y'all. God bless you now. Don't throw no darts at me. <laughs> or are you, okay, my brother and sister, or are you otherwise engaged? Hmm? Do your true loyalties lie elsewhere. You know, we get caught up in everything <clears throat> that's going on. The day-to-day -day and, and what's going on, and I, I'm doing taking care of this, I'm taking care of the job, I'm taking care of my family, I'm taking care of this. God says, you have no other gods before me. No one comes before me. Getting a little hit of myself there. So, there are many references in the Bible about Christian commitment. Commitment to our families, our neighbors, employers. Oh, what you say? Yes, employers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> the church. But the Bible teaches that the number one most important commitment of our lives is to Jehovah Almighty. Nobody comes before him. Nobody. And nothing. 
I heard my preacher read this morning the scripture. I'm going to regurgitate to you right now. Yes, Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Nobody comes before God. God says, you shall love the Lord your God with all. Some. Just on Sunday. Oh, every day, Brother Lacey said, with all your heart and with all, here we're all, all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. And I added that in today for my brothers and sisters because all I needed was the first one today because that's where I'm going. But I needed to add this because we seem to forget about this one all the time. I love God. I love God. God say, if you don't love your brothers and sisters and you say you love me who you haven't seen and you see them every day, well, you're a liar. You can't love me if you don't love them. So I put this in because we needed this. It says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophet. Jesus is telling us that every fiber of our being, every facet of our lives must be committed to loving and serving El Shaddai. This means that we must hold nothing, absolutely nothing from El Shaddai. Furthermore, Jesus tells us our commitment to him yes. must go beyond. Watch out now. Well, <laughs> Y'all don't shoot me now. I got to pull a bit. Is, is it, we got some Kevlar on this. <laughs> must go beyond our commitment to our families. Well, no, you didn't say that because I love my babies more than I love my husband. I love my babies more than I love my wife. I love my husband more than I love everybody. Must go beyond our commitments to our families. Or oh, you say, preacher, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, verses 26 through 27. <clears throat> 14, 26 through 7, 27. Luke says, <clears throat> if anyone comes to me and does not hate. Uh oh, wait a minute. Well, he said, hey, God don't hate. Well, you know, I'm the preacher, so I researched it. What does the hate mean? The hate means love me more than anyone or anything else. So when you see that word hate, what he's mean is you can't love anyone or anything more than you love me. He says you can't love him more than his own father and mother and wife and children. And brothers and sisters. Yes, and even his own life. Huh? I go, man, I'm, it's about me. The whole world is about me. Tell us, Brother Lacey, no, no, no. He cannot be my disciples if you don't put God ahead of all of these. And whosoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot, cannot. Be my disciple. Do we understand? We have a commitment to make here. We cannot be his disciples if we don't put God ahead of everyone and everything. Such commitment means our family relationships may have to be severed. Y'all read about Abram, didn't you? God told Abram, get you away from your family. Get out here. I got something for you to do. You can't be with your daddy who's worshiping many gods. You can't be around the people. Get out here, and now I'm going to name you Abraham. Sometimes family, they may not believe in God, and you do, so you're going to have a problem. So, but you're still supposed to try to love them and show them the way. What I'm saying is such commitment means our family relationships may have to be severed. It means our commitment to Christ. Demands if given an either or situation. 
only if it's an either or situation, that we turn away from our family and continue with Jesus. What you think about that, y'all? Oh, I hear very few amens on that. I ain't turned away from my family. Jesus also says in Luke, <clears throat> Luke chapter 12. Let's get Luke chapter 12. Because see, I'm a preacher who believes in the word is the power and the word is what changes. The word is what makes things happen. I can get up here and pontificate and tell you all kinds of stuff and exegete the word of God. But if I don't never tell you the word of God, then I didn't bring any power. Luke 12, 51 through 53 says, <clears throat> Suppose ye that I am come to give you peace? I tell you nay, Christ says, but rather division. Well, what do you mean division? For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two. What he's saying there is the three may believe in Christ and the two may not. You're going to have a problem. So in every situation here, pick one side and say, they believe in Christ. They do not in this scripture. And two against three. <clears throat> 53 says, the father shall be divided against the son. Maybe the son believes in God and the father doesn't. And the son against the father. And the mother against the daughter. And the daughter against the mother. And the mother-in-law. Oh, well, wait a minute. We know that mother-in-law stuff. That ain't that ain't, that ain't godly. That's just worldly. Now, well, your mother, mother, you you mess with her son. Well, mess with her son. That's my son. I don't know what you're talking about, girl. You better get right. No, no. No, let's, let's stick with the word. The mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the bottom line is that those who cannot make that kind of of commitment yeah, yeah, yeah. to put Elohim first above all others yes, cannot be his disciple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus is warning us in advance. He's telling us he wants us to know this because it's hard stuff. You know, we need to know this. So what is he saying? He says the reason for such commitment and loyalty is that the trials we may have to endure will be quite demanding. Our allegiance to Christ at times may be arduous, difficult, tough. Jesus tells us in John, see, it's, it, it's not easy always to follow Christ. We get all, all in, in here and we, we love God. I love God. I love God. God is God. And God is good. Listen here, somebody's going to tell you. Somebody going to tell you, I want to hear about God. Every time I see you, you talk about God. I need to talk about my problem. Well, that's why I'm trying to tell you about God, because God got the answer to all your problems. And see, it's going to be hard because they're going to be looking at you in the face and frowning up and getting mad at you. And you got to stay calm and you got to be like Jesus. You got to show some love. So I, <laughs> help them, help them. So it says in John. 15 and 20. Remember the word that I said to you. Watch this now. John 15 and 20. A servant. Is that what we are, Christians? Well, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, watch this one now, they may they sometimes may think about it. Huh? Say it again. They will also persecute you. So if, they, well, if you're walking around here and you say, oh, <laughs> being a Christian is easy, being a Christian is good, it's no problem, it's all great. God say, all you got to do is wait. Because if you are dedicated and committed to me, they will persecute you. And you will be persecuted. There will be some backstabbing. There will be some lying on you. There will be some persecution. The Apostle Paul echoes Christ. Warning. I want us to get this now. Not only Christ, but the Apostle Paul says it too in 2 Timothy 3 and 12. What does he say? Preacher, what he says in 3 and 12, 2 Timothy, indeed, all who desire to live godly. Do you desire to live godly? 
life in Christ Jesus. What you say, preacher? Y'all reading it? Say it. Will be persecuted. If you think you're going to get through this, hmm, yeah, you're fooling yourself because God don't lie. Jesus tells us the cost of discipleship. He wants us to know it's going to cost us something. You got to have some skin in the game. This ain't no freebie. You know, everybody in the game going to get a trophy at the end. No, you're going to put some skin in the game. Somebody going to elbow you when you go down the court. Somebody going to knock you down when you try to go for the dunk. Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> in Luke 9, in Luke 9, verses 23 to 24, what does God say? He says, if any would come after me, now, see, you, you got to decide, now, do I want to follow God? Because I'll be person. Mm. He says, let him deny himself. Can you deny yourself? Oh, he's quiet. I heard a few people, oh, I heard mumbling and grumbling. Can you deny yourself? Yeah, he must deny himself and take up his cross just on Sunday. Just on Easter. Just on Christmas. Just on Mother's Day. Daily. As Brother Lacey said, every day. Seven days a week. 365 days a year. And follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. Well, see, I ain't got to go along with that. You know, I, I, I'm going to be rich, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. This life going to be beautiful. But then you're going to lose eternal life with Christ is what it's saying there. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What you saying, preach? I'm saying if they do us the way that they did the Rome, the Christians in Rome, catch you and say, recant. And you say no. And then they wrap you up in a cloth. And take you out beside the road and stake you in the ground and put you there and then set you on fire so you can light the roadway. You know that's where the word Roman candle came from, right? They was burning Christians on the side of the road. Roman candle. Will you recant or will you commit to Christ? Hmm. For, my, for Christ's sake, will you commit? In essence, the truth, the true cost of commitment to Christ is one, ladies and gentlemen, of total self-denial. You have to deny self. You have to. The daily bearing of one's cross, the continual following of cross as a servant. You ain't running nothing. Preachers, elders, deacons, teachers. We, 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 we messengers, we're servants for Christ. Looking out for the flock, serving the flock. <clears throat> the picture for us here that God is giving is one of obedience, one of devotion, one of service, one of self-sacrifice and sanctification. We have to sacrifice, and we have to do what God says to do. We must be selfless, you all. Christ's sacrifice on the cross embodies the ultimate punishment and humiliation. He was punished for us. He was humiliated for us. He did all of that for us. He did all of that for us, and we reject it. Christ took on the sins of the whole world. So all of us could have an opportunity to get saved. We said, I don't care if he took it off of me. I'm going to take mine back. I want to put it back on me. More than that, than the humiliation, it fully demonstrated the love of Adonai for us. Huh? The Lord's selflessness in giving his life for the world, for you and me. Paul followed the Lord's example of commitment, sacrifice, and service. In Galatians 2 and 20, in Galatians 2 and 20, Paul says, 
I have been crucified. Is this what you say? I want every Christian up in here should be saying this. It's not about us. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer, no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. When you look at me, you're supposed to see Christ. When I open my mouth, you're supposed to hear cries. Not yelling and evil language and cursing and spitting at people, backbiting. You're supposed to see cry. It's not me that lives anymore. It is Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, in this body, I live by faith. Can't do it on your own. Oh, Got to study the word of God and let the Holy Ghost teach you and show you. Can't do it on your own. You live it by faith. Yes. But the lady said, faith in the Son of God. Yes, what, what the Son of God do? It says, who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody should have said, Jesus suffered for us so we wouldn't have to. And we come to church on Sunday and like, when did I get out of here? You preach too long. Well, you know, sometimes the preacher be talking loud saying nothing. Huh? No, 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 no. I ain't gonna give y'all that. No, you here to worship God. Don't worship the preacher. Don't, don't worry, it's too late. Don't worship the preacher. Worship God. Worship the word. You here to praise God. Total commitment to God means that Jesus the Christ is our soul, 100 percent soul authority. Our guiding light. I'm not talking about soap operas. Our guiding light and our unerring compass. Jesus never will lead us the wrong way. He always points to true north, which is God. Being committed to Christ means being a servant. Being obedient to Elohim. Keeping Elohim's statutes and commandments. You got to study God's word to know what to do. Being Fruitful. Uh oh. Can people, you all, can people see your fruit? Uh oh. I heard, huh? Can people see your fruit? Can people see your love? Uh oh. Huh? Remember, it's Christ that lives in you now. Can people see your love? Your unselfish concern for others. Your joy. Your inner peace. Do you have any of that? Hmm? Your long suffering patience and uh, like I like to say not the ability to wait but how we act while we wait. When you wait is everybody else in the room tired and frustrated because you was waiting. Man, I just had to wait all this time. I'm tired of this. I can't stand it. But you're waiting. Yeah, yeah. When are they ever going to get it together? I just need to move on. Everybody's sitting around there. What's wrong with you? Get on your phone and talk. Man, I'm tired of these people up in here. So you'll say, well, see, I waited. I got it. It's not that you waited. It's how you act. Why are you waiting? Huh? If you act a fool while you're waiting... You got another thing coming. Huh? <laughs> so, can they see your kindness, ladies and gentlemen? Your goodness. Remember, God lives in you. You got some goodness in you. You're supposed to be, Brother Lacey. Supposed to be. Help us, Jesus. Some faithfulness. Does everything come before your faithfulness to Christ? Let me slow down, because y'all say I'm being mean when I say this one. Well, your gentleness. Well, yes. Mm. Yes, How about your self-control? Do you have any self-control? Are you teachable? Can somebody sit you down and teach you? Are you willing to listen? You have some self-control. You ain't got to take it over everything and know everything about everything. Even if you know everything, sit down and be quiet for a minute. You just might learn something. God have mercy is right, Brother Lace. Our axiom, our accepted truth 
It's succinct and simply stated. I want you to put one on the front of your shirt, and I'm going to add another. Put it on the back of your shirt, and this is what you should say. For me to live is cross. That should be on the front of your shirt. What do you mean? Well, Christ lives in me. Love you, brother. Do you want to get saved? And better yet, on the back of your shirt should be, for it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So we get it coming, and we get it going. They know who you are. And then you got to show it. You got to live it. You got to, yes, you got to walk the walk. You got to commit. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to commit. You know that old story about the farmer who was a great farmer and, and treated his animals great and did great things for them, and then they had the, the, the pig, and then they had, and they had the chicken. Yes, Brother D, and the chicken with the egg. And then, <clears throat> this, then, 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 then the farmer, here comes the farmer's master is coming by. And the farmer wants to give him tribute because the master's been so great to him, so good to him. They got to commit. He wants to commit. He, he committed to his master. So he goes to the, the animals there. We're going to use a little imagination. And the chicken says, well, you know, I want to commit too. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, give an egg. Okay. I'm going to give an egg. And... The pig steps up and says, you have been so good to me, my master. And I don't want you to be lacking for nothing in front of your master. So I commit and I will supply the bacon and the ham. The pig committed. The chicken. I'm waiting. The chicken contributed or donated, yes, sir. but the pig committed and sacrificed. Yes, if you're going to commit to Christ, you got to be willing to sacrifice. You got to be willing to die yes, for Christ. Yes, sir. You don't let nobody tell you, well, we're going we gonna to take away this on your 4, 5, 1, C3. We're going to do this to you. We're going to do this to the church. You're gonna, and you can do what you want to do. And I'm going to stand for Christ because I love Christ. And somewhere in the Bible, I think we're going to get to it, Christ say. If God say you're righteous, who can say you're not? Hmm? So stand. Stand. You can't let nobody tell you. So you got to ask yourself, and I know don't nobody want to be a pig. <laughs> but you got to ask yourself, as Brother Dean said back there, he kept saying, chicken, chicken, are you the pig? In the story, are uh, you the chicken? In Psalms 73, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what. Asaph said. In Psalm 73, I'm going to give you a scripture in a minute. Asaph yeah. talks about how he was tempted to envy the wicked. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ever tempted to, to envy the wicked? No, preacher. Huh? Huh? No? No? Do you watch the, I don't know if that still come on, the rich and the famous, no, it's cribs now. Uh, do you watch TV and say, I want this, I want that, I want to live a lifestyle like them. Man, I want all them girls, I want all them guys, I want the rich guy, I want the rich car, I want, I want to be like them. I'm going to be like Oprah. She still ain't married to me. I'm going to leave Oprah alone one day. Uh, so, Asaph said, tempted to envy the wicked. I think a lot of us, including this preacher right here, sometimes catch themselves envying the wicked who seem, that the wicked seem to have no cares and build their fortunes upon the backs of those they took advantage of. Don't they do it? Don't they do it? But then there's my, one of my favorite words. It can be messed up sometimes. My favorite, but <laughs> conjunction means something. Yeah, come on, cuz. Something coming after that. But then he considered their ultimate end. What is that, ladies and gentlemen? Hell, the lake of fire, separation from God. So in contrast with what they sought after, the riches, the fame, you can have the riches and fame with God too, but they want to get rid of God and do it for themselves. Can't do it. Not good to do it. If you do do it, well, Satan gave me, I got all these riches, and you're going to go to hell. Uh, no, no, no. I don't need none. No, thank you. Not buying today. 
So after that, he states in, and here's your scripture, in Psalm 73, yes. verses 25 through 28. That's all it says, <clears throat> whom, mm, it's like poetry, whom have I in heaven but you? I ain't got nobody else to stand up for me in heaven but you. And he says, and there is, watch this now, can we say this one? Can we? There is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing on earth that I desire. Can you say it now? Watch out, be careful. Can you say it? There's nothing I desire besides you. Can you say that to God today? Are you committed? He goes on 26 to say, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God, God is my strength, huh? My heart, God, if God is your heart, boy, your heart gonna be pumping. God is my heart, my portion for a few, for a few minutes. Come on, y'all, forever. For behold, those who, now listen to this, he's going to say, those who are far from you, he's talking about God, sometimes, maybe, what you say? Say it loud. Shall means it is going to happen. Ain't no doubt about it. It is going to happen. Shall perish. You put an end to everyone. Not just some, but to everyone yes, sir, sir. who is unfaithful yes, to you. Yes, Will we commit to God? Yes. Are we one of those people who got one foot in and one foot out? Oh, Today I'm in the church, tomorrow I'm out. No, I, I'm in the church and I church at the same time. I'm just saying. But for me, he says, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord. Can we say this? I have made the Lord my refuge. Yes, sir. Yes. Praise the Lord. That I may tell of all your works. Yes, That's some awesome stuff there, y'all. Yeah. To, to, ask off, ask, to ask off a commitment, a relationship with God, yes, matter above all else yes. in life. We need to commit like that. We need to say that. Because God loves us and he's got us. No matter what we're going through, all of this stuff, God's got us and he's waiting for us. He sent Jesus to die for us and Jesus went through all of this stuff for us so he could stand before God and say, I know how she feel. I know how he feel. I've been there. I have flesh. Huh? God loves us. Ladies and gentlemen, without that relationship with Jehovah, life really has no real purpose. Well, you may think it does. It doesn't. I'm going to say this to you. This is your audition. This is your trial period. This is your probation. Right now, God is looking at what you're doing. And he's seeing if you're committed to him. He's seeing if you put him above everything and everybody else, including yourself. Yes, and this is your one and only chance. There is no reincarnation. This is your one and only chance to get it right. And if you don't get it right here, you will, as the preacher right here, what it seems like to say, you will spend life in eternity. You will, there is eternal life for you. You can have eternal life in heaven with God and joy and happiness and peace and contentment. Or you can spend life in hell in a lake of fire. Awesome. Yes, Suffering and torment yes, and all that stuff. And I know people want to say, well, you know, that, that's, just, that's just hyperbole. Ain't no fire in hell. There ain't no worms that eat your flesh through the fire. Fire don't come. Well, okay. For those of you out there, I say I'll give you that. What you say? Church of Christ said, I'll give you that. Don't y'all kill me. I'll give you that. But what, I, what, what you can't do away with is God say, you will have suffering, yes, torture, yes. and torment. Now, you pick how it's going to come, yes, but you're going to suffer. Yes, There's going to be torture. There's going to be torment. If you don't believe it's fire, whatever it is, it's going to perk. 
And it's going to mess with you. So you go on if you want to, going around saying, well, God is just and God is good and God wouldn't punish me. You better read God's word. Because God ain't going to punish you. God, you're going to punish yourself. Because you, you're, you're, you're in your trial period right now. And you're picking the lever. You got it right there in front of you. What job you going to get or what job you're not going to get. Well, I'm studying this. I'm studying that. No, I'm going to sit in the back. And you're studying that level of how to go to hell. Well, that's it. That's all. The per- <laughs> that's right. What you do now determines your reward or what job you will have later. The purpose of man is to totally, 100% commit to God. To put your total trust in God. To serve God. To love God. To obey God. To praise God. To glorify God. Huh? Nobody else but God. Unconditionally. Forever, ever, and ever. I heard a preacher, and I love him, and I still love him, and I always love him. And I'm going to say his name because some of y'all may not know what I'm talking about. Brother Dean, Dr. Dean used to like to say, and it fits right in my sermon, and I'll tell it to you, 99 and a half percent commitment just will not do. We must be 100% committed to Jehovah. Can't nothing or nobody come before God. That's the real deal. That's just it. That's the real deal. Now, if you want to put something before God, I got to go to my job. I got to do this. I got to do all that. I got to do all this. God say he's a jealous God. <laughs> Y'all may think he ain't jealous. And you can sit here, and I'm going to say it way before I wanted to say it in my sermon. I'm gonna say, you can sit here with your hands folded. How we do it? Sit down. Oh, okay, praise the Lord. Sit down. Stanley singing his heart out. Let me look at my stuff on here. Oh, yeah. He's wonderful, too. And the preacher preaches his heart out. And you sit there and say, amen. You ain't yelling. You ain't shouting. God gave you emotions. And you can use your emotions for the football game, the basketball game. Woo! You see that score? Woo! Man, uh, the soap operas come on. God, did you see what they did? Huh? Woo! Don't, don't, don't start talking about politics now. We are losing up in here. We get so emotional, we start crying. But you get in here and start talking about God's word, you sit there like a boy. Give God some praise, some honor, and some glory. And it ain't going to hurt you to shout every now and then. Do all things decent and in order, but do some praise and glorify to God. You need to give it to him, y'all. Huh? Are you going to give him some praise? <laughs> it says, huh? What'd you say? You got to give it. You got to give it all to him. In Romans, in Romans 8. In Romans 8. 31 through 39. You know what? I don't care what nobody said. I'm be like David. I walk down here, and when we bring the ark back, we're doing God. I dance out all this stuff. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good to me. I don't care what you say. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And when you see, I can clap, and I can stomp, and I'll do all of that. Because when Michael told David, she said, David, you was a king. You shouldn't shame yourself like that. There's not your clothes in front of people. God told David, shut up. I'm finna speak to Michael. Michael, David was honoring me. And because you put him down like that, you shall be barren for all your days. God is an emotional God. Don't think he ain't. Don't think he ain't. We're made in his image. Okay? Romans 8, 31 through 39 says, hmm, this is a wonderful scripture. Y'all excuse me if I can't get there with you, but I'm sure going to try. God, give me the strength. What shall we then say to these things? Now, you go home and you read before that, you know what these things are. Because we're Christians, we're supposed to know what these things are, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. If God, remember what I said earlier? Before us, 
Who can be against us? Nobody. You stand on God's word and let them do what they will. And let your father look down on them as you pray for them in the midst of them doing what they do. It says in 32, he that spared not his own son, God didn't spare his son, but delivered him up for, don't skip over these two words, for us all. That's love, ladies and gentlemen. That's love. God for us all, when we were yet sinners for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, I know we want to say, well, God's not a genie. God's not a wishing well. Hmm. No, God's not. What God is saying, if you keep my statutes and commandments, well, you do what I ask you to do, I, I got you. Well, you doing what I said to do, well, I got you. Yes, Who that mess with you, you doing what I said to do, I got you. Yeah. Huh? That's what he's saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who shall lay anything to the charge yes. of God's do you know who you are? God's elect. And if you haven't been saved yet, you want to get saved because this is an awesome thing. God says you're his elect. The creator of the universe. It goes on to say it is God that justifies. Remember when I said it earlier? If God says to Brother Lacey, says to Brother Stanley Dean, says to Brother Griffin, says to Brother London, you are doing a great job. I am proud of you. God justified them. Who going to say they ain't justified? Well, I, I don't mean, care what you say. Well, God said it is good. It. Who is he, it says, that condemneth? Don't make no difference. They can't condemn. Well, it is Christ that died, rather, yet rather, that is risen again. Lord, who is even at the right hand Lord. of God. Huh? Yes, who maketh intercession for us. Christ is at the right hand of God talking to God about you. Well, I messed up today. Christ got you because you're trying and he knows what's in your heart. Yeah, she's suffering. God, I don't know nothing about that. God said, I don't know. Christ said, I know. When I was dripping sweats like blood, I was suffering. When they was beating me on the cross, I know I feel when my friends turn against me, when my friends turn and run, when people lie on me, hit me for no reason. Christ is standing before God telling God about you. 35 says, who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Look out now. Shall tribulation? Shall distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? You're running around here. These people out here shooting. I heard somebody say, that. Oh, don't make shoot today. I heard that in the prayer. Shoot all you want to. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to pray that you don't shoot no more and maybe God will fix it. But if we run around talking to each other and don't talk to God about the problem, we still going to have the problem. Huh? Give it to God. They want to stand out there and shoot in the streets. They want to stand out there and shoot people. Give it to God. And then get out there and do your work. Commit to God. There's work to be done. Tell people God loves you and life is important. We all made in his image. Don't be killing your brothers and sisters. <clears throat> so I'd just like to say God loves us. We are made in his image. And that's a glory hallelujah moment whether you want to believe it or not. To be made in God's image. So I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The only thing and the only one that can separate us from God. It's us, Brother Dean. It's me, myself, and I. God set it up so that you have a personal relationship with him. And Sister Dean can't separate me from God. Brother Lacey can't separate me from God. Sister Thurman, Sister B. Dean can't separate me from God. Only I can. 
So make up your mind. The only thing we should fear is disappointing Elohim. And why, you say, preacher, nobody ever tells us why. They just tell us we should, we should fear disappointing him. How about this, ladies and gentlemen? Because, because we love Elohim so much. Did you hear me? Maybe I need to explain that. <clears throat> when you love somebody so much, and then you disappoint them, and you see that disappointment in their eyes, Oh, man, it just messes you up inside. I hurt her. I hurt him, and I loved him. My mother, my father, my, my husband, my boyfriend. My, I just, I hurt them. It tears you up inside because you love them. So you don't want to disappoint God because you love him so much. And that should be it. And if you ain't there yet, keep working at it. God will get you there if you ask him to get you there. We should want to make Elohim proud of us. Yeah. We should have an unquenchable, ladies and gentlemen, an unquenchable fire and burning desire to hear our Abba Father say to us, Well done! Well done, my good and faithful servants. We should want to hear this Above all else, well, nothing should be more important to us than hearing that. Yes, Amen. Where are we at? Are we committed or are we not committed? We achieve this, ladies and gentlemen, by glorifying Jehovah, yes. by totally committing to loving and obeying Jehovah, mm -hmm. keeping Jehovah's statutes. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, they got to study to know them. And commandments. Is it that hard to read God's word and see what he wants us to do? Keeping our eyes on the prize. On our future home with God in heaven. And knowing Elohim intimately. Well, you say, preacher, how do I know God intimately? His word. He tells you how in his word. We enjoy God. By following his purpose for our lives, which enables us to experience true <laughs> and lasting joy, love, and peace. Watch this now. Even in the midst of our trials and our storms, to enjoy the eternal life, the abundant life, that Jehovah Jireh, our provider, desires for you and I. Why does God desire this for us? Well. <laughs> Watch this. Say it again, brother. Don't be ashamed. Speak up. Yeah. Because he loves us so, 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 so much. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. He sent his son to die for you. Yes, sir. Even when we was messing up. Yeah. And still messing up. Yeah. <laughs> I know this preacher still messing up. Yeah. Trying to get it right. Yeah. Matthews 3. Oh, don't y'all go talk. That's going to be the only thing y'all talk about you get out here. Bobby D, the preacher, he, he done messed up. <laughs> Listen, Matthews 3, 16 through 17. Matthews 3, 16 through 17 says... I didn't bring no hanky with me for, look to my, oh yeah, that, I can't use that. Oh, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. It says, for God. Hmm. See, when you let the word of God speak, the preacher can yell and shout all he want to, but when you hear God, you done heard something. God said, for God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, huh? But have everlasting life. Don't you want some of that? Don't you want some of that? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. The world's already condemned. He ain't got to condemn it. But that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah, somebody. 
Come on, somebody should say amen. amen. My question to you is this. Hmm. Are we just talking the talk? Or are we living, well, preacher, are we living the life that God is commanding us to commit to living out in our day-to-day -day lives? Huh? You come to church and you sit there and you ain't thought about God not one time. God knows our heart. He knows what you're thinking about when you think don't nobody know what you're thinking about. Are you walking the walk? Are you willing to do what God is asking of you? Or will we keep on doing? <laughs> well, I like that too. I didn't put that in, but I'm putting it in now. What you want to do? Brother Lacey said. What the world tells us to do. What our flesh, that old dusty eyed, earthly man or woman, we used to be. I hear you. You know I got it from, don't you? Hell, I got it from. Say it again. I hear you. That's a little Nathan you're doing there. <laughs> to be right. Matter of fact, the flesh is not only want us to do it, it is demanding and screaming for us to do it. Huh? What you going to do? Let me hear you. Are you going to commit? Will you commit to cross? Are you going to commit? I, I heard that. Somebody speaking the truth. Somebody said, I don't know. Lord, help us, please. Jesus, help us, help us, Lord. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? The world can be harsh, but God will bring you through if you choose him. Proverbs, <clears throat> we're getting close to it. We're getting close to it. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Let's just say, preacher. Say, I love a preacher. We sit up front and I give a scripture. And he said, before I get there, they're talking about like, that, that reminds me again of uh, some preachers of old. Yeah. They, they, you, you be like, Lord, they got my lesson. No, it already. They ain't open the book. <clears throat> Proverbs <laughs> chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord. See, we want to trust in ourselves. We want to trust in the, the, the people pontificating on TV. We want to trust in everybody. And the last person and the last thing we think of the trust is God. But God says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Not some, not a little, not just on Sunday, but with all thy heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. But I know how to do it. I know how to fix it. No. Go to God. Talk to God about everything, every problem, even every success. Talk to God. God knows what's over the hill. We don't. God knows what's around the corner. We don't. God knows what your so-called girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband going to pull next year. We don't. You better talk to God. To get some insight. Verse 6 says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Who is him? God. And he, who is he? Shall direct thy path. So when you go around that corner, go over that hill, the next year your girlfriend or boyfriend, God done already directed you. Uh, you walking straight towards the microphone, God done, oh. You go down the stairs. All right. I heard whom? Yes. <laughs> y'all don't stop. Y'all leave me alone up here. Proverbs 4 and 7. I'm getting to the close now. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting close. We're getting there. Let y'all out of here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I heard that. Yes. <laughs> Proverbs 4 and 7 says, Wisdom. Yeah. Who's wisdom? No, my wisdom. Brother London's wisdom. Huh? Brother Potts' wisdom. Huh? Sister Johnson's wisdom. God's wisdom. It's that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Whose wisdom? How are you going to get God's wisdom? In his word. 
in his word, Brother Lacey. And if you ain't got time to study God's word, you're messing yourself up. You better make time because ain't nothing more important than God's word. And with all thy getting, all that running around and picking cotton and picking eggs and all that getting, get some understanding. Who's understanding? Don't need your understanding. We done messed up already. God's understanding. Where you get it from? His word. We have to intensely, intensely, intensely study the word of God. Not just read it or listen to it or have We, we just, Lord help me. I look at my brothers and sisters and, yeah, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm going to get back to my lesson here. We, 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 we don't, we ain't got time for God's word. And God loves us so much and he wants to give us all that we need to do what he'd have us to do. And we run every place else and do everything else but study his word. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to comprehend it. Yes, we have to not just read it, hear it, but we have to understand what God is saying. Is that right? We have to live it and breathe it. Numa, we got to breathe so that we may know in our hearts. Yes, help us, Lord Jesus. So that we may know in our heart of hearts that Jesus brings us love. Not my girlfriend, not my husband, not my... Jesus brings us love. That Jesus is our peace of mind. That Jesus is our joy. That Jesus is our problem solver. Glory, hallelujah, somebody. That Jesus is our way maker. That Jesus is our refuge, our safe haven, our shelter before and after and when we go through the storm. We need it after the storm because we seem to forget. We get out of the storm and tell I did it all myself. Huh? That almighty Jesus is our strength. That Jesus is our power. That Jesus is our sound mind. You ain't driving me crazy because God said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. That Jesus is our provider. Don't look every place else for it. Go to God. That Jesus is our deliverer. That Jesus is our hope. When all seems lost, hopeless, and dark, Jesus is the light at the end of the tunnel. Somebody say amen up in here. Walls, lights, birds, trees, rock. That Jesus is our chance. Our another chance. What you mean, preacher? That ain't good English. Amen. What I mean is, we're going to talk about me. I had my second chance. I had my third chance. I messed that up. Jesus gave me another chance. I had my fourth chance. My fifth chance. I slipped a little bit on that too. I had my fifth, my sixth chance. My seventh chance. Huh? Still ain't got it right yet. Still struggling, still trying. My eighth chance, my ninth chance, my tenth chance. Look out, Jesus. Give Jesus some praise and glory. How many chances, Jesus? Seven times, 70. Chances. My eleventh, my twelfth chance. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus is our another chance. Mm, 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 mm. When we get it wrong, Jesus gives us Another thing. Ain't that wonderful? That Jesus is our help. That Jesus is our example to follow. He laid it out for us. We ain't got to mistake it. That Jesus is our salvation. The way, the only way to Jehovah and everlasting life. That Jesus is our victory. You got the victory. Do you have it? That Jesus is our friend. Now we'll skip past that one. I'm going to God Almighty, the creator 
all the universe yeah. Come on, man. says he's my friend. Yes, sir. Wants to be our friend. Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah. Do you hear that? Yeah. Jesus is our friend and that Jesus is closer to us than a brother. But only if, my brothers and sisters, only if we commit 100% to Jesus, will Jesus be all this and more to us. As I told you before, let me do it the way he do it, stand over here sometime and lean. Across the front. 99 and a half percent commitment will not do, Brother Lacey. Just won't do. I ask you as I close, <clears throat> will you commit to Jesus? Will you commit to loving God? Or will you commit to loving God only when you want to? This is a question, the only question that really matters. So there you have it. <clears throat> That's it. That's all. Will you do what God is asking you to do. The choice is yours. Will you commit to God over and above everybody and everything else, including yourself, myself, us, and give God Almighty the glory and the praise and the honor he so richly deserves. Remember, because he gave us what? Another chance. Another chance. Yes, I heard a preacher preach that somewhere. See, you learn something going to conferences. I heard him preach that. I said, when? I got to, I got to use that another chance. <laughs> so will you commit? Will you commit? I'm asking you, brothers and sisters, will you commit to Jesus of Christ right here, right now? <clears throat> I heard in Romans... 10 and 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing. You can't tell me you ain't heard the word today. It's, I told you about Jesus died for you. I told you Jesus rose, that God loves you, and the only way to get to God is through cross. Well. Huh? Yes. Didn't I say that? Yes. You must believe. Believe what, Bobby? In Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith, if faith comes from reading the word. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Yeah. Huh? Is that right? How are you going to get faith? Well, By yeah. studying the word. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. You got to pray to God. You got to seek God. You can't just sometimes think about God in the after. Think about God in the morning. Think about God in the afternoon. Think about God in the evening. All the time. But Lacey got it. But Lacey got it. Then you must repent. Mm. Yes, what you mean, repent, preacher? Well, you stop playing. Well. You got to turn away from all the sins and evil that you've done to hurt God. You must do a 180 about face and run away from that. That old woman or that old man, that fleshly man who wants you to do what they want you to do. As, as Brother Sims likes to say, and he uses both scriptures, I'm just going to yeah. use one, Luke 13 and 3. It says, I tell you nay, yeah. but except you repent. What does it say, Brother Sims? Well, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You shall all yeah. likewise perish. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Then the greatest thing ever, right. we should stand up and commit. This is a commitment here. You got to commit to do this anywhere, everywhere, all the time. When somebody asks you about Christ, you got to stand up and you got to confess what? Confess Christ. Christ is the Son of God. Christ is my Savior. Christ is the Messiah. Yeshua, I'm a shit. Jesus is the Son of God. Elohim. Amen. 